Gamers, today I got a good one for you. It's a build order for Byzantine. I did have one build order for Byzantine in the past, but I said, you know what? I don't feel good making another one until I'm sure it's good. The teal player is me. The orange player is Eliona, one of the top players in the world. I'm going to show you three different games. I'm going to be showing you a game against Delhi in a very aggressive matchup. I'm going to be showing you a game against Ayubid, where your opponent rushes castle. And I'm going to be showing you a game against English because a lot of you guys are probably meeting English quite a bit on the ladder no matter what league you are. That being said, I want all of you, if you're not a Byzantine main, if you are a Byzantine main, learn Byzantine versus AI or your friend and then go out on the ladder with this build. Go out there and dominate. Dominate the, com the competition. It is genuinely very, very strong build and very easy to execute as well let me restart so i can show you the opener because the opener is kind of important it is a very straightforward build to do and the best part of it all with this byzantine build this was inspired by recon you don't have to move out of your base for food that's the best part you don't have to go on deer you don't have to go on berries you don't got to do any of that you just sit in your own base and you chill so when the game starts the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put all six villagers on sheep and then you're going to take one and put it on any wood, one of these close trees. And then you're going to make a villager, of course, you're going to send your scout. And then you're going to take one of these five villagers and make a cistern. So where are you going to make the cistern? Preferably, you want to get gold plus sheep. And then the second cistern goes on berries plus wood. Obviously, this is very spawn dependent, but for example, because my gold and my berries are the opposite sides, the first cistern I'm going to put would be probably like somewhere like here so that I get the gold, I get basically the whole wood line and I get the sheep. And then the second cistern would be like here or here or here so I can get the berries and then get my cistern for the landmark. And basically, the moment you edge up to feudal, you will have enough stone for the second cistern so you will not miss out on berry gathering speed. So, um, you can see one worker on wood. I'm gonna build a cistern in a second. I think I was probably still looking where to go for it. There we go, I go right there. It's gonna get the gold. It's gonna get most of the wood line. So this is pretty much covering everything you need, this kind of cistern. Now, why did we chop with one villager on wood? We wanna chop to get exactly 10 wood and that's it. We only want this villager to drop off once and the reason for that is right now I have 90 wood and I'm putting one olive grove which is their farms. Ooh. Byzantine farms cost 60 wood not 75 which means that if I now build a house I'm gonna have 40 wood left so you chop the 10 wood so you would have enough for house plus mining camp. Boom! Now why are you building this farm early on you might be wondering. Well with this build, like I said, you're not going to be moving out on the map. So you are going to be building these farms early on. So it's basically like, why not just build it now? You'll get some extra oil and you'll save some of the sheep for later on. We're going to put a house and a mining camp. I try to put mining camp in the range of the cistern. That's why they're split. Um, now, one thing to note. Byzantine has an upgrade for their houses, border settlements, which increases the line of sight range by seven tiles and improves their construction speed 500%. Now, this is actually very important for you to place your houses uh, well. Now, what does this mean? I always like to put my first, um, my very first house, like next in front of gold, next to gold, whatever. If you're playing against some Spearman Rush Sieves, don't put your house outside of your TC range. Probably put it here so it cannot be burned down. But if you're playing against Sieve that will not Dark Age Rush, just put it here or here because later on you will upgrade it and then it's going to give you a lot of extra vision. So you want to put like one house here, one there maybe, one here, one here, one here, one here, and you get massive vision around your base. So now we're going to have three on gold, eight on food. I tried going with two on gold, um, you know, after I age up, but I feel like I'm not getting enough gold and I kind of prefer having um, three on gold to just make sure I have all the upgrades I want. So now that we can age up, I'm going with the Grand Winery. 
Now, you don't need to go like this super greedy with your Grand Wineries. You can also, I could have put it here. I, I think it would fit there, or like here. It's fine, like even if it's next to your TC, like it's it's not a big deal. I put it here because Delhi won't be able to do a lot of pressure early on, so we'll have a lot of farms under the Grand Winery. Now, as I'm starting to age up, what you want to do is you're going to leave four on food uh, to be able to produce workers. You're going to age up with four, and these guys are going to go on berries immediately when the age up finishes. And the three guys from sheep right here are also going to be moved on to berries. So pretty straightforward. And now we're going to rally onto the wood until we have 10. 10 on wood. And you're going to leave three on gold. And these three on gold are going to be there just to get all your upgrades. So I usually like to chop one or two trees. If if one of the trees was like here and, and then one is here, I would probably skip those two. But since these ones were kind of close to the, my wood line, I just went for um, those. Chop, chop, chop. You can see these guys are going to go on berries already. I'm about to finish aging up. And uh, what you can do if you're playing against aggressive sieves, you can do these early kinds of walls. So, um, again, you don't need to. And if I had nothing here to protect, then whatever. But you can. And I, I thought this is pretty easy walling it. It walls off a huge part of my map. And then the only place I got to defend is here. So you can do that, but I would not advise you to do it against every sieve. It's just sieves that can put pressure on you early like Delhi with their Gazi Raiders. So, I age up, and the first thing you want to get is Wheelbarrow and Double Broadaxe. So I'm getting my Lumber Camp, I'm going to get Wheelbarrow in a second. And I'm going to get my cistern, second cistern here. This cistern is basically the only purpose it's serving, is to get this stone in the influence. Uh, I'm getting this gold and I'm going to get all the farms in the influence of the cistern so they're all buffed up later on and then I'm going to connect that to the uh, first one. Um, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Slowly building up. Now, double broad axe, wheelbarrow. Uh, I would also suggest, if you have enough APM, do this. If you don't have enough a enough APM and you don't have enough multitasking, don't worry about it. Uh, but whenever you're researching upgrades, try to switch to Dialecticus. So I switch to Dialecticus on both first and second cistern, so that my research rate is improved by 30 or 60% if you have two for the wheelbarrow and... Um, for double broadaxe, so you will just get your upgrades faster. Again, if you if you're gonna forget to switch them back to conscriptio, don't bother with it. But if you think you got this, you're used to it, then then do it. So here we go. We got nine on wood. This is gonna be the tenth one. Um. So initially, I was going to go barracks, but I recently had a game where I lost to this build, uh, or to a build similar to this one from Recon, and he just went Horseman Archer, even though I went Gazi Raider. So I was like, okay, let's do that. Now, my stable is a bit late because I built all these walls, so you should be able to get your stables a lot quicker. So, what is the goal from here on out? You're gonna get the stable, you're gonna get a Mercenary House, and you're gonna get a Blacksmith for the wood that you have. Once you get stables, once you get um, a Mercenary House, you will be using pretty much all your wood to either do walls like this, build houses, get upgrades, obviously make horsemen, and then to build farms. So you're going to start making farms very, very quickly after. It's like you almost don't want to gather sheep at all. You just want to go farming immediately. So in this game, I'm going to be getting longbows. Now, which contract to go for is the big question. With this build, I would say against 90% of the sieves, you want to go for the longbow contract into land shits. Um, and then you want to go horseman longbow. Against sieves like English or against any heavy archer sieves in feudal, which there aren't many to be fair. I would say it's probably only English. You want to go javelin throwers. So, yeah. Now, in this game, you could also, by the way, go for Limitane if you want to. I think in this matchup, it's completely okay. 
Um, but against Delhi, you can also do horsemen, and I kind of prefer horsemen because you can also harass with them, pick off prelates uh, or scholars, but you can go barracks. And obviously, if you're playing against knight civs, you don't want to go horsemen, you want to go for uh, barracks so you can defend knights, right? So getting a uh, mercenary contract and whether you go stable or barracks depends which civ you're playing against. So, from here on out, I'm going to be rallying onto the food and I'm going to be using these guys to, be, to build more and more farms. I'm making a little house here, again, for the vision. I haven't gotten the upgrade yet, but I'm kind of preparing in advance. I'm going to speed up a little bit. You can see, just every once in a while, you just plop down a little farm. And this will keep up your oil income. Now, one thing to note, this game, I did go for these berries because they were safe and behind. You don't need to go for those uh, berries. If these berries expired, I would have just made more farms and I would have been fine on the oil. You want to have enough oil income to continuously produce whatever mercenaries you have. But this game, like I said, because I did these walls, I was like, oh, might as well go on the berries here. So longbows are coming out. I'm going to make a blacksmith right here. And try to avoid putting blacksmith where your production buildings are. Try to put, you know, one is for production buildings, one cistern, one is for your upgrade. So here, uh, my cistern is activated on this because I'm getting a wheelbarrow. I got uh, horticulture as well. Uh, and then I'm going to get blacksmith, so I'm just going to keep that cistern on the upgrade department. Now, the order of the upgrades you want to get is wheelbarrow, double road axe, horticulture, and then you get plus one uh, range damage or ranged armor, and then you get plus one, plus one, and at the end you get specialized pick, because you're only going to be mining gold with a couple of villagers here. Now, my villagers got pushed off of gold a few times, so I stopped gold production for quite a bit. Uh, but that's okay, you know, I just make it up by putting a little bit more villagers on gold uh, in a little bit. And now we have, all of a sudden, I have six horsemen and five longbows. Mind you, this is a matchup, uh, Delhi, as a sieve, is a sieve that can produce the most units in the game pretty much in feudal. They can spam so, so many units because they don't need to use resources for upgrades at all. So they can just fully commit to that. And you can see I'm putting like low HP villagers to the little farms. Um, and now, since I'm restarting the gold gathering, I should already be getting plus one range damage, plus one range armor. But since he prevented my gold, it's a bit delayed, but it's not a big deal. Now, the good thing about these horsemen is if the opponent goes horseman, or in this case, Ghazi Raider, and now he's trying to capture Sacred Sight, I can just kill the Scholar. Or, if he's playing defensive, I can just go around and kill villagers. And that's one advantage of going for horsemen as Byzantine instead of, uh, in this, you know, in this matchup, going for Limitane. Because if I went Limitane, I can't go and harass. I have to fight on straight up, right? Um, and another good thing is, when you go horsemen, the opponent will go spearmen, but you have longbows and he has archers. And in your case, longbows are obviously better than the archers. You can see more uh, farms are happening. And like I said, because I have safe berries here, I went for that. Now, once again, Delhi is a sale that can produce the most units in feudal. But if you look, I have 10 horsemen, 10 longbows. And my army is just way better than his is right now. So we go for a fight here. I snipe the spearman. He caps the sacred side, but I managed to decap it pretty quickly. And I think I managed to get a snipe on this scholar here, which is pretty, pretty big. Because now he only has one scholar remaining. And capturing the sacred has now becomes a lot harder. And if he ever tries to engage, you should always kite with longbows for as long as you can. You know, shoot, go back, shoot, go back. And then when he catches up with your longbows, then you go for a fight. Um... I have nine on wood right now. I think I sent one of the wood guys to the gold. Farms are still happening. I got plus one range attack. I'm getting um, forestry. And I was actually going to get plus one uh, armor. Or I think plus one melee something. I don't know what it was. But then I saw the archers. So I was like, okay, I need to get that first. Plus one range armor. Because up until this point, he didn't have archers. So again... 
my longbow production has been you cannot get 100% uh, longbow production up because you're gonna need 500 oil per minute and even with all these farms and all these guys on berries I don't have quite enough but you will still be able to get like long bows every minute 20 minute and a half which is still pretty good as you can see and 15 long bows the amount of kiting you can do with this this is how you should micro you'll see it in a second so you should just poke run back look at that i'm not trying to fight i'm just poking and you can pick off always couple of units before the main fight actually starts which is really really good um behind this i'm getting all the other blacksmith upgrades and this is the part that i love the most about this build farms are slowly added now i'm rallying on to so you want to have about 18 to 20 workers on food and after that you're gonna rally on gold so i'm producing horsemen the whole time i'm producing the villagers the whole time i'm producing longos the whole time and i'm still having enough income to soon age up to castle so if you compare our resources, he is fully producing units. I'm fully producing units. He's getting all his upgrades for free. I'm getting all my upgrades paid and I got all the upgrades and I'm still gonna age up in a moment. Why double mill? Because this one is, uh, I, I got one berry here and I just built this one so it's closer. It's just better income. Um, so I will also age up soon, which is very, very good. And I got enough uh, stone from this third cistern. So I'm gonna build that here. That's gonna cover the stone, the berries, and just get that um, gathering rate boosted to, what is it? 18% gathering rate. So like half a chapel from HRE, almost. Now the good thing about this build is 11 minutes in, I have three cisterns and I didn't mine any stone. And that's because the farms also give you eight stone. Every time you build a farm, they give you 8 stone too, which is really good. So here we go with the fight. You can see it right here. I'm picking off the uh, the spearman. He actually didn't have a lot of spearmen. So I just decided to go for it because I didn't want him to cap the sacred site. All the spearmen are down. And now in this kind of fight, horsemen, Gazi Raiders versus Longbow's archers. I don't actually need to kill his archers. I just want to kill his Gazi Raiders because my archers can kite everything else, basically. So, he's trying to kite, and now my horsemen are gonna be on his archers. I'm chilling, and even if you're trading equally, by the way, it's perfectly okay, look at the resources. Now I have 13 longbows, he's got basically only archers, and now we're aging up with the golden horn tower for more mercenaries. And um, look at that beautiful farm transition. And if you look at my sheep, I only I only used up like maybe five sheep total. Three starting and two extra sheep. So another good part about this build is even if you don't find a lot of sheep, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be going early farms anyway. So now I transition to uh, barracks. I'm going to go for triple barracks. And... I can also go for some kind of harassment with horsemen at this point if I'm feeling safe and then just defend until I age up. Now one thing to note is cataphracts, uh, some people you know in lower leagues maybe think they're good but they're pretty bad so I would advise you to avoid making cataphracts unless you have a lot of resources and you can't spend them, make them, otherwise don't bother. If you have more than 10 horsemen you should get the veteran horseman upgrade. If you have less than 10 horsemen, don't bother with it. Just ignore it because the moment I age up to castle, I will be making Varangian guards and then longbows. If the opponent is also into castle or, you know, they're making like um, their castle and they're making men at arms, you will also add one or two archer ranges. So then you will produce barracks, longbow plus lanchets plus crossbows to deal with their men at arms. But Varangian guards, because they have plus one uh, melee armor extra compared to normal men at arms, will do a very good job tanking the enemy men at arms. Um, so as we're aging up, you can see how the worker split is at right now. You want to make sure you have good amount of villagers on gold, and this is something you'll get a feel for the more you play this build. 
But you gotta get a lot of stuff. You gotta get teardrop shields. Uh, you gotta get plus one, plus one. You wanna get the eco upgrades. You wanna get the veteran contract upgrade. Like, there's a lot of stuff to get. And in one of the recent patches, uh, veteran contract upgrade got buffed. It's now cheaper and it's faster to upgrade. So now, even though nothing has happened in this game, as in, um, I haven't killed any workers, he hasn't killed any workers, we're similar army supply and I'm in castle and now I'm just spamming Varangian guards. I did some raiding with my horsemen and cataphract on this side. I'm getting, uh, I should have gotten plus one. Oh no, I, okay, I got it already, never mind. I got plus two ranged attack, I'm getting plus two ranged armor. And now when we have a fight, obviously I have men at arms and he does not, so this fight is going to be pretty, pretty one-sided. Uh, from this point on, this the biggest strength, I mean there's a lot of strength in this build, but the biggest strength in this build is my food transition is like almost done, right? But the opponent is should still be on, you know, on berries or on deer or on sheep. And you're now just pumping units non-stop. You're, you're not stopping, you're just going for it, you're spamming units. But eventually your opponent will run out of food and you never will because you already have farm sorted. And that's the really, really, really strong part about this build. This was a couple of ladder games against the Leona in a row. Here he played um, Ayubid, which is also a very strong and very popular sieve these days. I recently made a tier list depending on when you're watching this, so you can check that out if you want. And we're opening same thing with another farm. I got a really good spawn here, by the way. Really, really good spawn. And uh, basically one cistern is like, you know, counting for all the um, all the, the resources already. Now, oops. Now, uh, in this matchup, this matchup is a bit different. So the reason why I'm showing you guys three replays is I'm showing you... One replay where we're kind of clashing, one replay where I'm the one putting pressure, and one replay where I'm being super defensive. So you guys kind of have a good grasp on how to deal with everything with this civilization. Whether you're playing a Night Civ, a Castle Rush Civ. So like, if you are looking at this game, Ayubit is a Castle Rush Civ, and you play against HRE and you're like, well, I don't know how to play against HRE. You want to take the same approach against HRE as you're about to see versus Ayubit. So not no drastic changes right you'll get a good idea so we're getting grand winery right here i got some sheep and this game i tried two villagers on gold but i think i quickly switched back to three in like a minute or two because i was like yeah i don't like this so i would say keep three on gold so we're gonna do the same thing we're not gonna i'm not gonna cover the build as much uh because I just explained to you guys the build. I'm just going to explain the thought process and the uh, tactics behind it. So the moment I age up, because the opponent is going military wing, he will have... Um, what is it called? Uh, uh, Desert Raiders. So, Lenitane is a no-go. And by the way, uh, you got to scout what Ayubid is doing, but most of the time at the top level, Ayubid's Rush Castle. Okay. And I can see already he has uh, five workers on it and tower, which is kind of a tell. I'm going to go castle and he's getting five villagers on stone to upgrade a tower. So, do I make limit 10 against this? No, because he can just go range form and it's going to forever kite me. Do I make an archer range? No, because he will be going from uh, this, Desert Raiders, into Castle Rush, into either Gulams or Lancers, which archers are not going to help me. So I'm going to go Horsemen, because Horsemen actually do really well against Desert Raiders, even though Desert Raiders also do really well against Horsemen, which you'll see in a second. Um, but the Horsemen will allow you to dive for these gold guys, also go around the map and attack his villagers. Um, and if he is going for, you know, Gulams or Lancers, the Horsemen will have a lot of HP to tank, but also deal some damage to them and not be as useless as... Um, archers would. So, I'm gonna speed up here. Again, uh, the cistern that I'm making is for these berries and then I'm covering my whole wood line. I'm getting this gold too. So again, very, very good second cistern as well. And I'm gonna be making blacksmith here later on. This cistern is for military production. 
Even though I turned on Dialecticus for research. Now I'm gonna swap it later. So, uh, I actually did not see, even though, like, he literally walked past my house, I didn't see the Desert Raider. So I ended up losing a villager. Which is pretty bad, but it is what it is. It happens. So now, even though the camel debuffs the horsemen and does a lot of damage to them in melee form, the horsemen also do a lot of damage to Desert Raiders, even though they have 5 armor, because they are ranged unit, and horsemen do 9 bonus damage against ranged. So... Uh, they kind of both counter each other in that way. So if you look, he's gonna deal a crap ton of damage to me, but I'm also killing it with two horsemen, so... And it cannot outrun you. So Desert Raider cannot outrun the horsemen, which is very, very good. So what do I do want to do now? Well, again, if I go... I don't want to go Keshex, I don't want to go Javelin Throwers in this matchup. I also go Longbows. We're already making farms as you can see uh now this game i think i started with eight on wood but i changed very very soon to 10. again this game i was just testing out stuff to see if eight is fine because i am the one being aggressive and i didn't need walls but i think i'm gonna add two more very soon so don't be confused by that just put 10 on wood now I'm diving here, I'm preventing him from gathering gold, which is kind of what you gotta do. And he's already aging up. As you can see, he's already aging up. Now I'm diving here, here and there, just to make sure he doesn't gather gold for free. The longbows are now arriving, and basically when the longbows arrive, he should not be mining any gold anymore. Now, someone asked me in the chat while I was playing, or when I finished this game, what would have happened if you, um, what if he had two towers? Well, if he had two towers, he would need to delay his castle by quite a bit, because he would need to mine or chop wood for the tower, and then he would need to get another 50 uh, stone for the tower, and then he would need to upgrade it, which is like close to 300 resources, including the, the time for the running and all that. Now, he could have done that, and if he did do two towers, what I would have done is, instead of getting plus one ranged or plus one ranged armor, I would have just gotten Siege Engineering, and I would have made one ram, and that's it. Now, the best part about Byzantine ram is, when you're ramming towers, if this is the tower, the ram doesn't hit from here, it hits from here. Which means that the villagers cannot contest the ram without your longbow shooting at the villagers. So... If he went two towers, I would have just made a ram a, a lot earlier, and that's it. So, uh, because it's only one tower, I decide to dive here. I kill the second Desert Raider. I kill the scout. I go back. And now I'm waiting for plus one ranged armor to just completely dive and kill this tower. So he cannot collect any... Um, uh, what's it called? Any gold. Now, right now I have horsemen, and I have longbows. So what do I see? I see stables. I, I saw this stable. And in a little bit, I'm going to go around and I'm going to see second stable too. So he does not have gold for Lancers. I know that because I prevented the gold mining. And you can see he only has 272. So he's most likely going to go Horseman or upgrade Horseman and then spam Horseman. So what I do is I immediately switch to Limit A while continually putting pressure. It's very important that you don't let your opponent randomly get gold somewhere else. So I'm checking here, and I'm gonna check here later on to make sure he's not sneakily gathering gold. Longbows are here. You can see I'm going around. I'm gonna put one unit on patrol, usually with low HP, just to notify me when he is, if he goes there. Behind this, I'm making a barracks. I think I'm gonna make two or three barracks, actually. I'm checking, and I even see two stables, actually. So three stables total. I check here, no gold. So now I know what's up. Now, because he's rushing castle, and again, this is whether he's Ayubid or HRE, he's almost out of sheep. If we look right now, if I select his sheep, okay, he has 10 sheep, but a lot of those are not full, right? They're they're almost expiring. So he's, not only he, he doesn't have gold now, he will also lose food eventually and have to move out, and he already got the berries. So he's making houses, and now I just decide to go for tower. I have plus one ranged armor, so you can see the tower is not doing that much damage. I might lose one horseman, and that's it. Right? And now he doesn't have a lot of options in what he's gathering, because the sheep are running out. 
He doesn't need a lot of wood, right? He needs food and gold, which he does not have. And I think, by the way, this game, I think he got like 13 sheep. So he got more than usual. If he got like 6, 7, 8 sheep, he would have been out already. So now he has horsemen. He has upgraded veteran horsemen. And I have longbow plus horsemen. The first thing I do is I slide the desert raider. So that it doesn't debuff my cavalry. And behind this, second barracks is coming. And I'm going to spam limit an A. And if you look at my resources, I have a lot of food. And soon I am able to go to castle as well. So I'm going to do some... Uh, Mike ring here, my limit and I arrive. I push him back. And if you look at the army supply, I just have way, way more units. I'm getting plus one range, uh, plus one melee armor, sorry. Limit and are here, and now he's taking way, way too much damage. Now, if your question is, why didn't he go Gulam? Uh, or something else. Well, another option he could have gone for is archers, because he has access to a lot of wood. He could have gone archers and upgraded him to veteran archers, but that's why I already have horsemen as well. So if he goes archers, he kind of counters himself. Gulams, he would not be able to afford a lot of gulams. Uh, that's number one. And number two is um, even if he did go gulams, he had only like, what was it, 270 gold? So he could have maybe gotten plus one range armor and then only a few golems before he would run out of gold. So that wouldn't work either. Uh, as long as you prevent your opponent from gathering gold, that is. Which is, should be your main gold in these Castle Rush civilizations. Now he rebuilds a tower. He's also over here, which I get notified because he kills my horsemen. So now I know he's out of food. 11 minutes, he's making two farms and he's out of food. I dive the gold. And he is struggling pretty badly for the resources right now. Two barracks. I'm pumping units. And now, again, just like earlier, 21. I said 18 to 20 is fine. 18 to 21 is fine. I'm rallying onto the gold. And the important thing is I never stop making units. I'm constantly just making limit and A. I'm constantly pushing. And I'm constantly doing damage. And you're just doing a slow, slower age up behind it. I poke this. I have a scout here, by the way. Not enough to see this, but I see that he's not mining gold. So again, I know the only place I need to attack is his gold. I just go under tower because Limit and A have shield wall that reduces range damage like in 30%. So you can see it's not taking any damage. And I'm about to start the age up. The tower goes down. And he taps out. So that's kind of the idea how you want to play against Castle Rush ships in a nutshell. And then the last one, I will show you how to play against English. Now, English, I would say, is a sieve that's probably the most dangerous early on. And you will probably lose a game or two, okay? Uh, or three against English until you learn a little bit how to, how to build your base and how to adapt to what they're doing. So... This matchup is very, uh, or this match is very good to show you guys because this is not only against English, but this guy went for the fastest possible longbow push and it's cliffside, which is probably the worst map you can face this on because you're so close to your opponent. <clears throat> so here we go. Again, we're starting with the farm. Same thing. I'm getting gold. The reason why Clipside is obviously bad, like I said, is because uh, rush distance is very, very short. So the longbows arrive a lot quicker. Now, do you go limit an A against English? Well, no, because they don't make cavalry. And also, uh, the longbows are going to dent them in. Now, you might think you go horsemen. Now, you can go horsemen. But this is the thing. If you go horsemen, they will go spearmen. If they go spearmen, then you're going to have to make your own archers. And then you're going to have to make uh, javelin throwers for their longbows. But there is a shortcut to all of that. So instead of playing rock, paper, scissor, rock, paper, scissor, back and forth. What you can do is you can skip the horsemen completely. Go for archers into javelin throwers and then play very defensive. And I'm going to show you right here. 
This is very important to note because, like I said, English is a, first of all, save that you meet very often, but it's also a very unique matchup, so I wanted to show you guys this one. Now, what I do here is I put a tower. Instead of making stables, I'm going to put a tower that I'm going to upgrade, and I don't need to mine any stone because I have stone from building buildings, basically. So, I could have also placed it here, but I think this one is better. Because if I placed it here, he would be able to idle my workers from this position. But if he wants to idle from this, at least he needs to go around a little bit, right? So you still want to go for berries, because the most important part is to get javelin throwers. Now, um, why am I building this wall? Because if I don't build this wall, and he comes here with two longbows and two longbows here, he'll be able to deny my wood line completely. So... What I'm going to do is build a wall here and then build another wall here. So, if he attacks from the right side, my wood line will be completely safe okay. right here. Because he won't be able to attack it at all. So then I can just make archers, right? If he denies my gold and my berries, I'll make archers and I'll just make farms. If he goes from this side, right? Pushing from this side, I can just put my um, lumber guys over here. And then they're safe once again and the right side is safe. So this is something that's going to take a little bit to learn where to position your towers, where to position your walls against English in order to uh, deny them super early on. So again, he mined exactly 100 gold only. So this is the fastest English push possible. The longbows are arriving in my base at 445. So I don't have a second cistern because I upgraded the tower, which costs 50 stones. So the second sister will be delayed in this case, but that's fine. And I have eight on food. I'm getting wheelbarrow. I pulled off of gold, by the way, because I thought he's going to go around immediately. Now I'm like, okay, never mind. I'll put it back on gold. And then he arrives around, so I have to move them again. So that was a bit of a waste, but try to get at least... 150 for wheelbarrow so your workers can run away easier and now we're gonna get a mercenary house i'm almost at enough oil which is kind of what you need and this tower enabled me to get the oil i need now he's here idling my villagers but i just put them on this berry because he cannot hit this berry without getting the range of the tower i'm getting an archer range and now we're getting javelin throwers second cistern right here so everything's looking good. And soon enough, I there's a good chance, if I don't defend well, that I'm going to lose access to these berries. But if you look in this game, because I don't have access to gold, because I can't put too many workers on the berries, instead of gathering sheep, because I don't need food. The only food I need is to make archers, which are very cheap. Instead of putting more and more workers on sheep, Instead, what I do is I put a lot more workers on wood so I can make more farms a lot faster. And you can see I'm already at four farms. Super early into the game. Now, I see him with the tower. I saw that he's going back. So I decided to put five on gold. The reason I'm putting five is because my gold has been idle for quite a long time. So I want to be able to catch up and get my uh, horticulture. I want to get double broad axe and I want to get blacksmith upgrades too. I am getting the border settlements, and I want to show you this vision right now. Oh, he decides to go for the tower dive, by the way. I left exactly five villagers here, so that I can garrison. But now I have archers and javelin throwers just came out. Obviously, you're going to just aim with your archers, and then target javelin throwers onto longbows. So, if we look at my vision now, look at that. Look at that. I see everywhere around my base. This tower gives me so much vision. This house, look at how much vision it gives me. And I built a house here so that longbows don't sneakily come here and, and kill my villagers. And I could probably use a house like right here. Would be a pretty good spot to build it in. So that I have full vision around my base. I'm going to build a blacksmith in a second. And right now I'm just chilling. I am scouting, by the way, the whole time, and I see that he is still making units. I see that he is still committing. I saw that he's getting some gold for the upgrades, but he is still going for it. So I'm just making archers. I'm just making more farms, more javelin throwers. And again, sheep are completely untouched. So even if you get no sheep, it's okay. It's all right. 
So, I'm getting blacksmith over here. I'm gonna switch to Delectus. Delecticus, whatever it's called. Now he arrives again, but at this point, it might not seem like it, but the game is over. At this level, the game is completely and absolutely over. Now you can see stables here, which my scout sees as well. But even if he makes horsemen, he simply does not have enough economy as English to now suddenly produce double horsemen and spearmen and longbows or man at arms or whatever. And if I just stay like right here or right here and fight with all ranged units, I'll be able to one tap horsemen as well. So he goes back. In this case, you want to get plus one ranged armor first because the biggest threat in his army are longbows. So if you get plus one ranged armor, your javelin throws will have four armor, which is really good. There's that house I was talking about. Look at that vision. And I can see everything around my base. So make sure you use your Byzantine houses to give you vision uh, everywhere. What a lot of top pro players do is when they play Byzantine, let's say this goes into castle, you can take one villager and you can build a house like here and here and here because they build in like three seconds or something or five seconds and they will give you a lot of vision. And even if the opponent goes to destroy them, you will get info on their army so you can kind of move around them. Right now, I'm feeling pretty safe. I'm getting a second pair of javelin throwers. So I'm about to have eight. I'm getting more farms. And I just moved a lot of the workers from wood onto gold because my food is gathering quite a lot because of not making horsemen and I'm not making limit an A. My food is gathering quite a bit, so I just decided to pull workers from wood to gold in order to age up quicker. Um, and he just taps out because, well, he didn't do any damage while he was here, like at all. So he just decided to tap out and go next game. I don't know if he killed any units that game. So I killed three units, he killed zero units that game. And that was like, that was such a perfect game for me to record a guide for you guys because literally he kid, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything there. Uh, what to do against the boom sieve? Against boom sieves like Abbasid and China, you're just going to go for uh, horsemen plus longbows. 100%. Longbows against China or Jushi Legacy will destroy uh, Zuginus because you have way more range. Horsemen will force them into spearmen. So your longbows will not only counter Zuginu, they will also counter spearmen. Against Abbasid, it's the same thing. You're going to open horsemen, they open spearmen, you have longbows, and then they don't really have anything for the longbows, which is... Um, English is one of the best counters to Abbasid. So basically, you're going to play Byzantines versus Abbasid as if you were... English and instead of making spearmen man at arm longbow you're gonna go horseman longbow and if Abbasid commits to a lot of horsemen just make limit to name you uh, against knights is by the way one thing I forgot uh, you most likely will go limit to name into javelin throwers and the reason you go javelin throwers is you have a limit to name for knights then they will make archers so you go uh, for javelin throwers so that limit to name counter knights and then javelin throwers counter archers and that's it that is it if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please learn this build and go out there on the ladder. If there were ever free points to be made, it's right now and it's right here. Go out there. I We need to see Byzantine win rate skyrocket with this build. It's very easy to execute. Do it. Trust me, do it. It's a fun build. It's a cool build. If you're bad with map control and you don't like going out on the map to gather resources, this is the one for you. YouTube gamers, thank you for watching. Check me out on Twitch, I'm probably live right now. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.